بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اهلا وسهلا بكم اعزائي طلبه المرحله الرابعه في محاضره جديده من ماده امراض الفم معكم المدرس الدكتوراه افراح عدنان الهليمي دكتوراه في امراض الفم والوجه والفكين من فرع التشخيص الفمي اليوم موضوع محاضرتنا بعنوان سيست اوف ذا جوز سيست كان بي ديفايند از ان ابيثيليال لايند باثولوجيكال كافيتي Uh, and, uh, this pathological cavity is filled with fluid or semi-fluid material. Uh, the cyst can be classified according to the epithelial lining into the two cysts and pseudocyst. Two cysts have uh, two epithelial lining, while the pseudocysts uh, they have no lining or uh, semi-lining epithelial. Uh, so, uh, cyst of the jaw, uh, maxilla and mandible and the perioral region, uh, most of them. Are uh, two cysts, and uh, they uh, they uh, they are vary uh, in histogenesis, incidence, behavior, and the treatment. So uh, we should uh, we should diagnose uh, the 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 specific type of uh, cyst on the uh, on the identified area that uh, uh, come in your clinic in order to uh, good the treatment and to, uh, uh, and good treatment and the prognosis so the cyst uh, divided into odontogenic cysts that come from odontogenic epithelium and non odontogenic cyst uh, pseudocyst and the next cyst this lecture in this lecture we uh, uh, we discuss the odontogenic and non odontogenic cyst and the next cyst will next cyst will be uh, discussed later in uh, other lectures the epithelial uh, origin of the jaw uh, cyst can be uh, divided into odontogenic cyst that come from odontogenic epithelium uh, which is the rest, rest cells of mouse's reduced enamel epithelium and the rest of uh, dental lamina uh, and uh, also the non odontogenic cysts uh, come from the remnant of uh, nasopalatine duct cysts uh, and other uh, non odontogenic epithelium uh, the first uh, cyst uh, we discuss uh, the about the periapical cyst periapical cyst is also called radicular or apical uh, periodontal cyst uh, all the radicular or apical periodontal cyst and periapical or all the cyst will come uh, from the uh, curious lesion uh, or inflammatory uh, origin into the uh, periapical area uh, these inflammatory cysts are derived from the epithelial lining uh, that proliferate uh, from the small odontogenic epithelium that found in the periapical region which is the rest cell of malices within the periodontal ligaments uh, they develop from the pre-existing uh, pre-apical granuloma uh, the granuloma it is a focus of chronically inflamed uh, granulation tissue uh, that located at the apex of the non-vital tooth uh, this stimulation this will this granuloma will stimulate the residual epithelial rest, rest cell of malices to uh, proliferate and uh, as a response of inflammation they will form uh, proliferation of uh, the cells and formation of the cyst cyst uh, from the epithelial proliferation separated from the normal bone uh, and the surrounding bone uh, by the inflammatory stimulation and the formation of the epithelial lining fibrous connective tissue the breakdown of cellular debris that found in the cyst, this in the in the center of the cyst, will form the cyst lumen uh, that uh, is composed of protein concentration increasing in osmot osmotic pressure with this protein concentration, resulting in fluid transport from the uh, from the surrounding interstitial fluid into the lumen, uh, which is surrounded by the fibrous connective tissue. Uh, with osteoclast bone resorption uh, will occur the cyst will expand more and more uh, other bone resorption, fa resorption factors such as prostaglandin, interleukins, proteases uh, that come from the inflammatory cells at the periphery of the uh, of the uh, in the periphery of the cyst this will uh, lead to additional cyst expansion uh, in this uh, slide, we can see the sequence of the uh, event. 
uh, from the curious trauma or periodontal disease that uh, lead to death of dental bulb uh, and formation of necrosis, necrosis inside the bulb and then uh, causing apical bone forming inflammation uh, and by continuous uh, uh, this inflammation uh, uh, this will lead to formation of a granuloma uh, and this granuloma result in stimulation of the epithelial cell of malices and then uh, will be proliferated and formation uh, finally of the cyst. Radiographically, uh, periapical cysts cannot be differentiated from the periapical granuloma. Uh, in this slide, we can see there is a huge cyst, uh, a huge cyst lining. Uh, sometimes uh, a, a very fine radiographic, a very fine uh, uh, boundary of the cyst and uh, the, the uh, radiolucency of the cyst that uh, I mean, I know the cyst. بس بصورة عامة ما حقدر أفرق بين granuloma والcyst بالبداية خاصة. The periapical cyst is lined with non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium uh, مثل ما نشوف بالصورة variable thickness رح نشوف بها keratinized squamous epithelium uh, large number of neutrophils found in the area and infiltrate with the plasma cell this plasma cell formation of Russell body that represent accumulation of gamma protein also the presence of cholesterol cleft and multinucleated giant cell uh, طبعا هذا السلايد اللي هو امينو اللي هو سلايد هيستوباثولوجي there will be variable thickness للثيال لايننج خاصة اذا صار عندنا انفلميشن اكثر بها uh, treatment and prognosis uh, first of all we should prescribe antibiotic for the patient according to his medical status and then extraction of the acute tooth or if uh, the accused tooth is uh, the anterior uh, part of the oral cavity that will uh, we we we, uh, we, uh, we want to preserve the uh, accused tooth for aesthetic uh, for uh, then uh, uh, so we would canal treatment and epsectomy the epsectomy is a dark cortage lesion in the epical area uh, uh, in the case we did extraction of the tooth واللايننج اوف ذا سيست ما شلناها بالشكل الصحيح ما سوينا كروتاج المنطقة فحيصير انكومبليتلي ريموفينج لللايننج اوف ذا سيست فبهالحالة ممكن يصير بيها ديفلوب مرة ثانية وراح يصير بيها بروليفريشن وراح يصير عندنا ريسيديوال سيست طبعا الريسيديوال سيست له في الكلينيكال سيجنفيكانس انه في بعض الاحيان حيصير عنده اكسبانشن لارج اكسبانشن ويسوي لنا بون ريزوبشن ويسوي لنا ويكنينج المجزلة او المانجول لاترال بيردنتال اند جنجابل سيست بوث سيست ار فاوند ان ذا لاترال اريا اوف ذا توث ذا اوريجين اوف بوث سيست از فروم ذا ريست اوف دنتال لامينا uh, like in the difference between lateral periodontal and gingival cyst is uh, location in the, uh, in the location of the gingival cyst within the soft tissue, while the location of the lateral periodontal cyst is within the alveolar bone. Patho uh, genetically it linked to the gingival, lateral periodontal and the gingival are linked together. Gingival cyst mostly occur in adult, while uh, the uh, the 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 lateral periodontal cyst, uh, they come from the remnant of dental lamina and uh, in the bone the, and the gingival cyst, uh, the remnant of the dental lamina that found in the soft tissue between the oral epithelium and the periosteum. The most uh, lateral periodontal cyst and gingival cyst found in adult in the mandibular, premolar and cuspid region. Uh, and there will be male predilication noted about two to one, and uh, the distribution, uh, the distribution where the gingival cyst is nearly equal gender, بالنسبه للجنجابل cyst. بينما البيرودنتال cyst لا راح تصير عندنا بالميل أكثر من الفيميل. The median age for both type of the cyst will be between the fifth and sixth decade of life. Uh, in this uh, picture, we can see this gingival cyst. The gingival cyst appears as a small, soft tissue swelling 
uh, within uh, slightly uh, inferior uh, to the interdental papilla. Uh, it assumes slightly a bluish discoloration. Uh, this is relatively uh, according to the reflection of light uh, into the uh, cyst. Uh, most cysts are less than one centimeter in diameter, and radiographically, the gingival cyst can uh, there is no finding in radiograph because it is completely in the soft tissue. While the lateral periodontal cyst is appear as uh, uh, as well uh, round. Uh, or teardrop shape that uh, mostly is unilocular radiolucency uh, can be seen in radiograph because it is found within the bone and uh, we can see there is a fine uh, uh, fine uh, uh, fine area fine area the uh, peri-cyst peri will be fine area and will also there will be a root uh, divergence and the resorption of the uh, uh, of the bone in this area and the vitality of the teeth that found between the, in between the cysts will be vital. Histopathologically, both cysts are lined by thin epithelia, non-keratinized epithelium and the cluster of glycogenic clear epithelial cell will be found and there may be noted a nodular thickening into the cyst lining the treatment and prognosis of both cysts is, is local excision uh, uh, and the recurrence is uh, very rare, if seldom. Uh, gingival cyst of a newborn, or as to say, bones nodules. This form of the cyst is appear as multi, uh, multiple nodules that found on the alveolar ridge of a neonate and perforate with the dental lamina. And also, uh, the mass location of uh, this uh, type of bones nodule is with, within the alveolar ridge and the uh, palate, on the heart palate. Uh, they form as a small keratinized cyst, and this cyst will self-limited. It will be a rupture into uh, the oral cavity a few months or weeks later and require no treatment. The integral cyst or follicular cyst. Uh, this is the most common type of the cyst after the inflammatory uh, cyst, the periapical cyst. The integral cyst is common form of the development cyst, and it is developed because of the proliferation of reduced enamel epithelium surrounding the impacted tooth. Uh, the result of this uh, cyst will be increase the cyst expansion uh, because of the fluid osmol or osmolarity and the release bone resorption factor. The dentigerous cyst attached to the tooth. It is uh, associated with impacted tooth uh, from the surface of the tooth, the cemento enamel junction, uh, enclose the crown of the impacted teeth, uh, of unerupted teeth. The most commonly associated tooth is the third molar and the maxillary canines. The highest incidence of dentigerous cyst occurred uh, in the during the second and third decade of life. In radiograph, it represents as well defined unilocular radiolucency uh, with corticated margin and is associated with the crown of unimpacted tooth uh, or unerupted teeth. The resorption of the root adjacent to the uh, erupted teeth may be occasionally occur. Uh, the cyst uh, will be uh, surround the, the crown of the tooth, uh, may be completely surround the crown of the tooth, so it is called central variety in radiograph, or it may be surrounding the lateral portion of the tooth, uh, so it is a lateral variety, or maybe surrounding the whole tooth, so it is called circumferential variety. Histopathology of the dentigerous cyst is appear as a fibrous connective tissue wall that lined with non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium that range from four to six layer of the cell. The mucus cell and uh, the mucus cell and ciliated epithelial cell can be seen, uh, and secondary inflammation and, uh, and epithelial hyperplasia can be noted. The treatment of the dentigerous cyst is uh, extraction of uh, the associated tooth and inoculation. Uh, there is a potential complication of the dentigerous cyst if, if untreated. 
uh, including transformation of the epithelial lining into the amyloblastoma and the really intraosseous mucoepidermoid carcinoma. Eruption cyst. Uh, eruption cyst is a result from fluid accumulated within the follicular space that uh, associated with, the, uh, with an erupted tooth, as we see in this picture. The epithelial lining in the, in the, the lining space is uh, proliferate from the simply reduced enamel epithelium, uh, and, uh, ex uh, and this uh, type of the tooth will be uh, an eruption period, so it is uh, subjected to trauma, and the uh, blood uh, will appear within the tissue that formed in this space, uh, if, uh, formation of eruption hematoma we'll see as this picture. The treatment, uh, uh, no treat or no, no need for a treatment of this uh, type of uh, of cyst. Uh, the tooth is erupt in the region, and the the this is this appears spontaneously without complication. Uh, sometimes we uh, we open window for the uh, for the tooth to erupted uh, spontaneously. Uh, glandular odontogenic cyst, or Cialo odontogenic cyst, another synonym. Uh, a rare developmental odontogenic strong predication in the mandible. Uh, more than uh, 80% will be found in the mandible, especially in the anterior mandible and um, across the midline. Uh, this is uh, this type of the cyst will slowly growing. And uh, the jaw expansion will uh, range uh, will, with, with wide age range uh, occur. In radiograph, we will see there is multi multi nuclear multi -nuclear, uh, region uh, of the lesion with wide variety uh, in size, uh, maybe smaller than one centimeter, and maybe large, uh, and involve the mandible bilaterally. Uh, there will be well-defined cycloroting uh, margin. The teeth uh, that uh, associated uh, with uh, this uh, cyst will be displaced and root resorption is noted. The histopathology of this uh, type of the cyst, it consists of non-keratinized 35 squamous epithelium that lining with focal thickening uh, in the epithelial cell assume swir swirled appearance. This can be seen. In the picture, there is a swirled appearance. The epithelial lining consists consists of a cuboidal cell with cilia and the mucous cell with mucine pools. The treatment and prognosis of this type of the cyst: the lesion can be caused directly locally aggressive. Therefore, surgical management with adequate health bone remain beyond the extent of the cystic lesion. Long-term follow-up should be done essentially given and the local aggressiveness and recurrence high rate approximately 25% of the lesion. Odontogenic keratosis. It is an ionic developmental odontogenic cyst that is derived from the dental lamina remnant in the mandible and the maxillae. Uh, it is a special type of the cyst that exhibit aggressive clinical behavior and relatively high recurrent rate. Uh, the recurrence uh, will be associated, and, and also it is, will be associated with the uh, with syndrome, uh, nebul nebul basal cell carcinoma syndrome, and radiographically it is mimic other type of the cell multilocular radiolucency. In uh, it is the more common in jaw cysts, and occur at uh, any age, and the peak incidence will be found in the second and third decade of life. About fifty, about five percent of the patient with odontogenic keratosis have multiple cysts, and mostly found in mandible, about two to one ratio in the ramus and posterior portion. Uh, in the maxilla, they will be found in the th third molar area most commonly. Factors that contribute to pathogenesis of, of, of odontogenic keratosis include high proliferation rate 
over over expression of anti apoptotic protein PCL2 and several growth factors and uh, also expression of matrix metalloproteins 9 and uh, uh, and uh, 2 uh, all these contributing factor for the expansion uh, and aggressive behavior of the odontogenic keratocyst the histopathology of odontogenic keratocyst is the form of, from the uniform epithelial lining range from 6 to 8 uh, cell layer thickness and the basal cell exhibit the characteristic palisaded pattern with a polarized and intense uh, stem uh, of a nuclei which is uniform in diameter. The luminal epithelial cells are parakeratinized and produce uneven corrugated parakeratin. Uh, focal uh, zone of orthokeratinase can be seen. A special type of odontogenic keratosis is also, is also uh, uh, diagnosed, uh, which is called orthokeratinase odontogenic uh, cyst. Can be described from the, uh, from, uh, the odontogenic keratosis, which is the first one that we have called parakeratin. Uh, orthokeratinase odontogenic keratosis differs from the parakeratin histologically uh, distinct uh, between two. Uh, we should, by the histology, we should distinguish between the two types. Why? Because the orthokeratinase uh, it is uh, less clinical aggressive and the low rate of recurrence, while the acus the parakeratinase, and generally not associated with the basal cell carcinoma syndrome. In the orthokeratinase or the orthokeratinase or the dogenic cyst. We can see the, the histopathological picture. There will be a prominent granular layer found immediately uh, below uh, the non corrugate parakeratinized area. The basal cell layer uh, prominent. Uh, there will be uh, less an epithelium. Uh, there will be, as we can see, a segmented cell, not as this cell differ from this cell uh, flatten cell in appearance in comparison with parakeratin type the treatment and prognosis of the uh, auditogenic keratocyst uh, require wide surgical excision with peripheral osseous curettage uh, for the management of these uh, cysts because it is aggressive and have high recurrent rate about 10 to 30 percent uh, and this is depend uh, on how the lesion is managed and also related to the variable and thin connective tissue wall that's surrounding the cyst that lead, that lead to incomplete removal of the uh, cyst lining and formation of the daughter satellite cysts uh, in bone adjacent to the primary lesion. Also, the cyst proliferate and proliferate the for the prop overlying epithelium basal layer uh, if not uh, eliminate uh, properly, properly during uh, cyst removal, it considered a significant in, uh, in, in recurrence rate of the of the cyst. Nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome. Uh, the this type of syndrome is autosomal dominant inheritance pattern that found in mutation in PTCH gene. Uh, clinically. Uh, it is uh, consists of multiple odontogenic keratocysts uh, and multiple basal cell carcinoma, uh, skeletal anomalies such as bifid, rib, calcified spallex, cerebri, and facial defect. This is the characteristic feature of the nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome. Uh, calcifying odontogenic cysts, or, or as to say COC, they, uh, it is a special type of the cyst and uh, it is a developmental odontogenic lesion that occasionally it is habit recurrence derived from the odontogenic epithelia uh, remnant from the gingival uh, within the mandible or within the bone. It usually appears as individual younger than 40 years old of age and uh, there will be a predilection for female more than 70% of COC are seen within the maxilla. Radiographically, COC may present as unilocular or multilocular radiolucency with well demarked margin within the radiolucency there will be scattered irregular size opacity 
This opacity would use uh, appearance called sold and paper type appearance or pattern. Histopathology of the uh, COC it consists of well defined uh, epithelial lining of viable thickness. The fibrous connective tissue capsule that line the, 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 the epithelial lining uh, and there will be formation of interaluminal epithelial proliferation that obscure the cyst lumen by using impression of the tumor, of solid tumor. The most prominent and unique microscopical appearance of this cyst is formation of the ghost cell. Ghost cell, it is a nucleated cell that retain the outline of the cell membrane and undergo dystrophic mineralization. This is the uh, ghost cell. Uh, now we discuss the odontogenic cyst. Now we are going to discuss the non-odontogenic cyst. First of this cyst is, is a fissural cyst. Fissural cyst is, uh, uh, is, uh, is called for the epithelium that interrupt along the embryonal lining of the fusion. احنا مثل ما نعرف انه بالامبريولوجي اخذنا انه المجزله والمجزله والمندبل تتكون بالامبريو باي يونيون اوف تو سيجمنت ان ذا ميد لاين سو ان ذس فيشرال لاين وذا ابثير بي انتربتد اند فورميشن اوف ذا سيست ليتر هاو ابوت ذا كونسبت اوف ذا فيشرال اوريجين اوف ذا سيست اوف ذي سيست از كويستشند باي مور ريسنت ييرز ان ماني انستنس The pathogenesis of these lesions is still uncertain. يعني حد الآن إحنا بعد الأبحاث مستمرة فيها. Regardless of this origin, one cyst will develop in the oral maxillofacial region will be slowly, slowly increase in size and uh, in response to slightly elevated uh, in hydrostatic pressure in the lumen, uh, luminal pressure and will be expand. Uh, first of this uh, non-odontogenic cyst is the uh, maxillary cyst. Globulomaxillary cysts are considered fissural cysts located in between the globule and globular maxillary process between the maxillae of the lateral, lateral, lateral incisor and canine. The theory of the origin involve epithelial interruption within the embryonic eclosure and uh, subsequent cystic change. Radiographically, as we see in the radiograph, the globular maxillary lesion appears as well defined inverted uh, bear shape radiolucency, reducing uh, and producing divergent of the root of the maxillary lateral incisor and canine teeth. A radicular cyst and periapical granuloma uh, can be ruled from the, uh, by the pulp vitality test. In shake, the pulp vitality will be vital tooth. Uh, asymptomatic teeth were vital and also they will be divergent of the root. Biopsy is necessary, necessary to establish definitive diagnosis for this cyst. Another type of the cyst is the nasolabial cyst. It is a rare soft tissue cyst of the upper limb. The pathogenesis of the nasolabial cyst is unclear. Uh, the, it represents a cystic change in the remnant of the cell that uh, form the nasolacrimal duct. A peak incidence of this cyst is noted between the fourth and fifth decade of life, and there will be distinct uh, female predilection is noted about four to one uh, in contrast to male. A chief clinical sign in the soft tissue swelling that represent in the soft tissue over the canine region or mucobuccal fold. The epithelial lining of this cyst is characteristically by pseudo-stratified uh, columnar epithelium and numerous goblet cell. Stratified squamous epithelium may be ciliated because it is, uh, it is near the, uh, the respiratory epithelium uh, and the cyst will be treated by curettage and, uh, and there is a very few recurrence expected. Nasopalatine duct cyst or it is called incisive canal cyst. It is located within the nasopalatine canal. It develops from the proliferation of the epithelial remnant of the uh, um, uh, embryonic nasopalatine duct cyst, uh, duct, uh, duct epithelium within the incisive canal, and it is uh, affected main 
uh, more than women and uh, the difference is about 3 to 1. The most uh, cases are asymptomatic, uh, clinically will appear as a swelling in the uh, in the nasopalatine uh, bacteria, in the nasopalatine uh, region. This is only the sign that gives the attention into, into this uh, region. Uh, Cedo cysts are as to say a neurosomal bone cyst. There are pseudocysts. Pseudocysts, يعني معناها احنا مثل ما قلنا بداية المحاضرة, uh, it has not a true epithelial lining. Uh, so uh, it appears radiographically as cysts like, uh, but microscopically it have no epithelial lining. The lesion represent a benign lesion uh, of the bone that may arise in mandible or maxilla or other bones within the craniofacial complex. The pathogenesis of aneurysmal bone cyst is not well understood uh, nowadays. Uh, some evidence that suggests these uh, aneurysmal bone cyst are a reactive process, and other evidence suggests it is a tumor. Uh, the supporting uh, this is a tumor. There is some uh, research that supports it is a tumor, and other research it is supported that it is a reactive process. Histopathologically, aneurysmal bone cysts consist of fibrous connective tissue uh, that contain variable number of multinucleated giant cells filled with blood space. The treatment and prognosis of aneurysmal bone cysts is, re is relatively high recurrence rate associated with simple curettage, excision, and curettage for the, uh, curettage for the, the, the lesion uh, and uh, may require cryotherapy is the treatment of choice. Traumatic or simple bone cyst. It is an empty intrabony cavity that lack an epithelium, so it is acidocyst. Uh, it is mostly found in mandible. The pathogenesis of this cyst is uh, not uh, uh, clear nowadays, assuming that is, uh, there will be a, tra a traumatic induced uh, hematoma. The most common site of, of occurrence of this uh, traumatic bone cyst is mandible and the pain is infrequently noted. Radiographically, it is well-defined area of radiolucency. Microscopical examination reveal uh, well-vascularized uh, fibrous connective tissue without uh, evidence of their, of their component. The treatment and prognosis organization of the clot will be necessary to complete bony healing without recurrence. Uh, static bone cyst, or as to say, Staffan's bone defect. It is anatomical depression found in the mandible that appears resemble the cyst on radiograph. It is believed to be developmental. The cause is, uh, is unknown nowadays, but uh, some suggested that the lesion is due to entrapment of the cerebellar gland or other soft tissue during the development of the mandible. The lesion is entirely asymptomatic and can be discovered by uh, accident uh, and uh, there will be appear in adult, uh, particularly men. Uh, it appears as sharp, well-circumscribed well oval radiolucency that uh, uh, beneath the inferior alveolar canal. The appearance of the static uh, bone cyst uh, usually pathognomic, uh, and it does not require any treatment. Focal osteoporotic bone marrow defect or hemobiotic bone marrow defect. It is uncommon lesion, uh, asymptomatic lesion that uh, consists of focal radiolucency in the area where the hemopoiesis is normally found or seen. Uh, such as in the angle of the mandible and maxillary tuberosity. Approximately 70% of this lesion will found in the posterior mandible and the 70% of this lesion found in female. The pathogenesis of osteoporotic marrow defect uh, is unknown nowadays, but there are three theories to formation of this uh, type of the uh, defect. Uh, number one, abnormal healing following tooth extraction. Number two, residual remnant of the fetal of the uh, fetal marrow uh, will uh, persist uh, in adulthood. And number three, a focus of extra medullary hemopoiesis that become hyperplastic in adult life. The microscopical finding of the uh, hemopoietic uh, bone marrow defect is uh, consists of hemopoietic cells with relatively fewer fat cells. Non-specific uh, in radiograph 
من radiographic finding uh, the diagnosis is done by incisional biopsy is general thank you uh, for giving me your attention and uh, I will see you in another uh, lecture wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh